It's the day after Thanksgiving 2022. It's about 51 degrees Fahrenheit. We had two inches of rain yesterday. Should get some more rain tonight. I wanted to walk my entire water flow. I'm going to make it quick. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each place, but I'm going to walk the whole area uh, so you can see totality of what I've done. This is the top of my property. Paved road right there. The water on this side of the road comes in right here and it flows into a pocket pond. I need to level that off, add some rocks to it for the overflow, but let's keep walking. On my neighbor's side, there's another flow. I'm sorry. This flow is from the other side of the highway. There's a culvert. It comes in through the culvert and comes into here. Over here, there's another water flow. That's on this side of the road. It comes through. It just comes through in the grass here, flows into the sediment pond. This is the sediment pond. Have lily pads over here. Have a proper rock output overflow. call this one new pond the sediment pond and this one are the two that Zach Weiss built with elemental elemental ecosystems his YouTube channel is water stories let's keep walking okay we're now at the overflow of the new pond we're gonna follow the path of water he built it so that the overflow is very slow. It's, it's very slow allowing the water to sink in. And you kind of, you can kind of see it because not a lot of grass growing where it stays super, super swamp from the overflow. Oh, and I will mention while I'm at this that through October this year, we had 12 inches of rain. It's been a uh, terrible year. Things are just now springing back to green. Okay, so the water slowly, slowly flows down these rocks and goes into the ravine. I'm gonna show you one thing here. I'm gonna walk to the right. Well, let me go back here. Beautiful oak trees, live oaks. Uh, before, before we started this, you could not see straight through there. It was a thicket. I left a little bit of thicket fixing to show it to you you can see that thicket there that covered all the way down past the oak trees anyway we cleared that out uh, hopefully we saved these oak trees it was like this one here was covered in mustang grapes we pulled them all out and anyway, we get back to the water flow When the water comes in, I built a brush dam. And then as I dug some holes, I threw some dirt on it. I'm not gonna talk too much about it other than you can see the, this area here, that's filtering. That, that's limbs and leaves and sediment coming in, getting filtered out by the brush dam. So it should eventually start piling up. And keep walking to my low water crossing. Nick built this. It allows me to get to what we call the off-grid cabin. No electricity, no water. 
we'll see what happens to it um, got some ideas but it's time and money anyway on this side of the low water crossing I dig it out I mean to me a hole in the ground is water that soaks into the ground so when I dug this out I had just threw the dirt over there on that brush dam anyway you can see where water overflowed it's got a low spot and it flowed out over through here and then we got more of that thicket that we left behind I'm gonna walk around the fence all right there's the thicket we're approaching my one log dam I made a video about it had some video with the water overflowing it was overflowing yesterday but it was raining I couldn't get the camera out one log dam and then we immediately go into a brush dam I threw some cedar lumber in there but on this brush dam I actually set posts so it a flood the water the, the dam wouldn't get pushed downstream all right we'll continue the walk We're approaching our original pond. We did have it built. I had to use Damn It Pond Sealer by Shalex Industries. The pond leaked, I'd say, eight inches a day when it was full. Anyway, uh, applied the Damn It Pond Sealer and it actually worked. I thought I was buying snake oil. Didn't believe it would work, but desperation. Here we'll get to it in a sec. So I've dug dirt out here. Um, I guess I was trying to make a creek into the pond, but I stopped short of actually tying the two in, so I still have a high spot of rocks here. So it drops down into here, and this is, most of this is natural. This is a nature's brush dam, I guess. We've got these dying dead trees here, and they actually just fell in laying across it so it's creating its own brush dam see over here there's some other other ones i may have thrown this cedar tree in but everything behind it is natural just fell in on its own so anyway, that that holds a lot of water and it should fill in over time so we're going to go into the original pond That is a floating wetland that's, I need to pull it, but I can put plants, vetiver, uh, St. Augustine grass, any type of water plant, just let it float and, and uh, take the nutrients out of the pond. All right, we're gonna keep our walk going. I'm gonna stop and turn as a reference point. I've got a diagonal water flow over here. We'll walk that, but it ties into this I guess what I'm walking through now, I would call the main water flow, but my other two water flows flow into the same area. So this is the overflow. I will point out real quick the difference between fencing cows on this side no cows on that side you can just see the difference in the grass height we see it through here too let's see if this fence is hot not hot water's flowing 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 Then we get back to what was a natural ravine before the ponds were built. This has been left undisturbed. Got to see the best way to get around there. We may have to fast forward as I make the walk. Peas. Peas. 
I walked uphill. You really can't see it because of the tall grass, but this is a swell. It's a long one. It's on the highest part of my side property. Anyway, it, I guess you would say it's a when it overflows, it flows down into that ravine just past the original pond. Back to fast forward. Okay, we're back. Like I said, it's a natural thicket. You can see a lot of you'll see a lot of animal trails. There's standing water over there. That's pretty interesting. Animal trails, animal trail, animal trail. Alright, I'm, I'm going to start walking uphill now. Like I said, this is all natural, undisturbed. Big tree, we call the Grim Tree. I believe it's a cedar elm, which are very fragile. They're, they like to drop limbs, as you can see underneath it. Okay, I'm going to show you the octagon deer blind. Uh oh. I think this is pretty cool. Get a better picture. There we go. You use cedar pickets, like side of the road cedar pickets, and a dish antenna that was on my property. This, this opens up on each side, or this one doesn't. This or the, There we go, we got a window open. Anyway, the only thing I had to buy was a floor joist. The dish, proper, the dish was on my land, the cedar pickets. I either tore down at my business or I got them on the side of the road, honestly, I don't remember. Concrete blocks were on my property. So I bought some two by sixes and plywood for the floor for framing. I'm going to go back and get a better picture. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Okay, we'll keep the water water walk going. Started to hear highway noise. We're getting close to the highway. Okay, so the, the highway is over here. I'm just going to go back again. The, this is my main water flow. This right here is, I'm going to call it the highway water flow. We'll be walking it, just showing you. I'm not going to come this far with it, but I'm just showing you where it ties back in. It's like everything comes back to this spot. I was gonna say get ready for grunts. Okay, we're clear. A lot of raccoon prints in here. And this end spot is pretty much gonna tell my story or what I'm trying to do. But once you get past my property line, big culvert. Culvert big, it's a culvert big enough to walk through. So, it kind of, I don't know how to explain this. Um, do you want full ponds? If all your ponds are full, the 
any rain you get is going to overflow that water ends up off your property so my new pond actually soaks into the ground last year last year it took 12 inches of rain before that pond was full so that means the flow the flow i got from the proper from the neighbors back on the high side on the uh where the road was all that rain that came in from all the neighbors both sides of the street up a hill was all saved on my land because the pond wasn't full it caught every drop of water until we hit the 12 inch mark for the year and then it overflowed then when it overflows it has to go to my original pond and let's say that one was a foot down so it had to fill up before it would overflow and until that one overflows all the water saved on my property hope that makes sense so the big question is yeah we want a pond and we want to fish in it and swim in it but if you're really into water retention do you want a pond that stays full i'm fortunate enough to have three ponds plus i don't know four or five pocket ponds so it's not important that they all stay full anyway i'm going to shut it off right now and then move to my diagonal water flow.